Item C, adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to purchase a video inspection truck from Ayers Industries, Inc. in the amount of $249,984 and appropriating $34,984 from the Wastewater Enterprise Fund. Honorable Mayor, members of Council, I'm here to present information on the resolution before you tonight requesting authorization for the purchase of a CCTV truck and associated equipment necessary for, to efficiently inspect and manage our wastewater collection system. To help illustrate CCTV or closed circuit TV and by way of introduction, I have a short video to help set the stage for my presentation tonight. Um, I, I edited a, just two clips um, just to show you uh, just a couple of things that we see. Um, I'll try to point out some of the more interesting things other than the obvious, which is <laughs> some roots, but there's some what we call horizontal cracking along the pipe as well. You can see it running the length of the pipe. Um, these are just the, some of the things that we find, um, but I wanted to give you a sampling. Um, we have hours and hours of videotape, obviously, but I... Um, I didn't have to look very far to find some things that at least to point out to council um, that is fairly prevalent um, in our sewer system. If you'll notice, this is 86 feet. Oh, I moved the mouse. It's about 86 or 88 feet from the street, you know, backyard line. Um, again, just meant to show you some of the things that the CCTV does for us. We find locations like this that we may encounter when we do maintenance. We may have a problem pulling our line in or out. And um, while we talk about CCTV a lot, I thought it would be appropriate to at least have something that showed you just a sampling of what we mean by that. Um, in 2012, the city completed a sewer condition assessment project, which is a one-time video of our entire sewer system. This assessment... Jim, I I think that's, oh, there you go, sorry. Um, in 2012, we com completed a, a one-time uh, assessment of the entire sewer system. This assessment was required as part of the Baykeeper Consent Decree and the Cease and Desist Order. After the project, the city was further obligated to, to video inspect sewer lines after any sanitary sewer overflow and also inspect and monitor known areas of the system that has defects, much like the ones you saw in the video. Best management practices also recommend that video inspection of the entire system take place every five years. At the end of 2012, once the initial sewer inspections were completed, the city considered several options on how to assess the condition of the sewer system under the terms of the CD and CDO, while also taking in, into account the needs of the system along with these best management practices. In 2013, the Wastewater Division added the video inspection to its annual maintenance program. And also, November of 2013, the Council approved a contract with Proven Management that provided $70,000 for on-call video inspection services. At that time, staff also presented information and discussed costs associated with the on-call contract with Proven. Um, we also discussed performing CCTV services in-house and the purchase of a CCTV truck. The contract approved um, with, with, uh, by Council with Proven provided only the minimum amount of condition assessment and inspection of sewer pipes after SSO events. And that was done to minimize the cost, but also just to serve as an interim step until CCTV could be brought back to Council for consideration. In order to provide better and more reliable CCTV services, staff recommended at that time moving to a five-year best management practice service level using in-house staff and equipment. 
As a result, the CCTV truck was budgeted in the 2014-15 capital improvement program and uh, funds of $215,000 were set aside for that. And just by way of a quick, make sure I got my, um, a brief look at the equipment that we're talking about. We're talking about equipment that's specialized to do sewer uh, TV inspection. This equipment is built to go inside of our sewer lines and has a rotating head that can look all the way around the top of the, the pipe and the bottom. Um, it's obviously for rugged conditions and um, you can see, maybe you can see, there's, there's lights that are attached to this um, camera tractor and it can raise and lower to get out of the flow if need be. Um, and it's very rugged and durable. It's very similar to the equipment that a lot of other cities are using. And this is a, a glimpse of what the equipment um, is housed in. So it would be a cube type of a, of a truck with a small workstation um, that would have an operator that could look at the video, store the equipment, record, and, and that sort of thing. But I wanted to show you what we're talking about um, and the equipment that we're asking council to take action on tonight. In preparation for tonight and over the past year to year and a half, uh, our crew has met with several vendors. We've had hands-on crew demonstrations where we've actually videotaped the lines with crew, uh, with our staff that walk through the process with the vendor, utilize the equipment. We've also talked to neighboring cities uh, to get feedback on what they're using, how they're using it, how it affects their operation, what they're doing with the information, how they're plugging that information into their CMMS systems and so forth. Um, we've done this to uh, research obviously the best options and equipment that will best meet our needs. Um, tonight, staff recommends the adoption of the resolution authorizing the city manager to purchase a video inspection truck from Aries Industries in the amount of $249,984 and appropriating $34,984 from the Wastewater Enterprise Fund. And that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to take questions you might have. Any questions for Jim? Irene? Thank you. Uh, Jim, can this also be used to look through uh, storm drains? Yes, that's one of the, um, uh, actually, Ted Chapman, who's our streets and stormwater um, manager, is really excited about the ability to be able to do that because one of the things that we've struggled with, as you know, after the December storm, I'm giving up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Um, it was, we weren't able to really research some of the storm lines that we needed to find out what happened during the storm and some of the impacts and some of the damage. We did some, um, I guess you would call manual inspection. Ted and I actually walked through some of the bigger pipes. Um, but in trying to assist engineering to determine what happened, we just didn't have the, the ability to do that. Um, so this would give us that, that added ability. One of the things it would do is provide us the flexibility that we would need. For example, after a storm and while groundwater is present, we would want to do some CCTV to look for I and I and look for issues um, that we, so we have to do it in a targeted way and having our own equipment allows to do that. Okay, and then, so it, it can go how small a diameter and how big a diameter and still have a good quality picture. It's really high definition, and uh, you saw that, the, I can back up, the camera's are very versatile, and it's the tractor that you put the camera on, so there's kind of two parts to this. The camera is the black, sort of the business end is this end right here, and this head rotates um, 360 degrees, and it also tilts. And then there's the tractor, and we will be getting two different size tractors if, you, if council approves this tonight, which we'll be able to do six inch pipe up to um, the larger diameter pipes without a problem. Okay. Good, anyone else? Rico, you have a question? Yeah, um, you had mentioned a few questions on the 70,000 that we had contracted with. Uh, how much of that did we use? All 70 this, or? We, we have not used all 70,000 this year. When the council originally approved the contract in 2013, the, the, the $70,000 figure was based on what we thought we would have to do for 11 SSOs. So the idea was we, we are required to CCTV after an SSO. Um, and so that number was based on 11 and also um, some other 
you know, a few items or a few issues that the, the crew might have during the year. It's very expensive uh, to have an on-call CCTV, and um, they, they charge a four-hour minimum, so we try to sort of hold our powder, so to speak, in case we have SSOs. And uh, how much is the cost for training staff? Training staff, we have some uh, training that's involved uh, that, the, that the vendor will provide. We are also going to do PAPC training, which is a couple thousand dollars for uh, our crews to sit in and, and do the, the training. The training that we will be doing um, with the vendor, we've already kind of learned how to run the system and run the cameras, and Milbrae has the same system, so we've, we've been able to um, get our crews down there. And I think it's more of once we get the equipment, familiarizing ourselves and getting more efficient at it as opposed to learning how to use the system, if that makes sense. Okay. How many staff members to, uh, is just one that's going to drive, park, and then operate that, or is it required so, to? Um, good question. Most of the time there'll be two people in the truck depending on where it's at, but the spots that we're going, we have a CCTV implementation plan that we put together, and it's going to consist of focusing on those priority areas and those spot repair areas, which tend to be more high traffic areas because they're larger diameter lines. So that would take two people. There are other lines that are in residential neighborhoods that one person can do. So as we go through, depending on where we focus our time, it could be one to two, but most likely in the beginning it'll be two staff members. And who would be maintain, uh, maintaining the vehicle and how much is that annually? The, the vehicle, uh, the vehicle itself is just a, a shell, a truck body. So that would be our garage shop would, or, or if it's a warranty issue, would be uh, would go to the dealer to per, to perform maintenance on the, the chassis itself. The equipment has a one-year warranty period, and it's from what all of our interactions and discussions with cities, it's pretty bulletproof. What you tend to to do is have to clean the system, you know, make sure everything's clean, but. Um, it's pretty maintenance-free, other than the cables and those kind of wear items. Okay. And it's not a requirement of the decree or baykeepers to have this purchase, correct? The, no, the, C, the consent decree did not, does not require us to buy a CCTV Just videoing truck. the lines, which we, we've right. had other opportunities and looked into those options with correct. Uh, neighboring cities, i.e., have we talked to South City? Correct. We have an agreement 2013 when the council approved the $70,000 contract. The, the subsequent meeting came back to council to approve an agreement with South City, which we have in place. Okay. Our difficulty is getting scheduled and working with them. They, they're they very busy with their truck. And that's why we have South City and a private contractor. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you, Chair. Michael. No. Oh, Ken, go ahead. I, I just wanted to to get an idea of how much more we'd be able to do it with this investment and 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 pretty much ex if you can expand expand on the the questions that uh, Rico made as far as staffing I mean do we have the staff to do this and how often and how often will they be uh, performing this because this is this is a brand new service right you don't you may have staff that can are capable of doing it but they're not doing it now so how does that take away from uh, everyday services? I think the question of staffing is a good one. We've we've spent a, quite a lot of time talking to other agencies and how they've deployed their truck. Um, I think uh, everyone that we've talked to has been in the same boat we were at one point, where they went from a contracted service to an in-house service. So we we plan on having uh, staff um, savings or or adjustments in two different areas in particular. The first is. When the contractor does come to town, we have to dedicate staff. We have to do all the traffic control for the contractor, for example. We also have to have staff on hand to help do cleaning or to just direct them on where to go and what to do. So that staff will be obviously redirected. That staff time will be not saved, but just reallocated towards in-house operations. Also, this isn't going to be a full-time eight hours a day, you know, 300 days a year kind of a thing. But it is going to be a significant effort on the front end until we get some of the CCTV done that we would like to, um, the follow-up to the 2012 work. The other efficiency that we will gain out of it is right now we've done a really good job with the CMMS to target our, our maintenance practices and fine-tune and hone where we clean and how we clean and how often we clean. 
but the CCTV truck will allow us to monitor those cleaning activities and better adjust the schedule, which will make our cleaning more efficient, which will allow us to spend time with CCTV. It's sort of a, um, once you do some CCTV, you can adjust the other things that you don't necessarily know what's occurring inside the pipe. How much, do you know offhand how much it costs in 2012 to do that 85 miles? I have it here somewhere. Yeah. Because I think, I mean, I'd, I'd feel a lot better knowing that this investment is, you know, is a no-brainer, even if there's going to be additional staff staff involvement, and also uh, knowing that we can do more than just one-fifth of the, of the pipes. So that was a four-year project took four years? Correct. Yeah. Um, I don't have that. I mean, you venture to guess? I mean, I'd be happy with a guess. Half a million? I, I know yeah. that the, um, like Robert Wood is here, he may know, but I think the, the four-year contract was $1.3 million. Yeah. Yeah, over, over a million dollars to do the 85 miles. That sounds like a deal. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Michael, you had a question? Yeah, through the chair. I, I was actually, um, Councilman Navarro asked uh, some of the things I was interested in, just, you know, overall, you know, what's going to do to staffing and everything. And, and I think this would have been a lot more credible had we seen a program presented to us rather than just a request for a vehicle, because there are a lot of components. There's a lot of different things in play. You're going to have to change your staffing model. Are we going to look at having to get additional staff? Um, are people going to be out of the, out of the, you know, what are we not going to do if we don't add staff that we were doing before? So I, I think there's a number of pieces in here that, that are, um, that are critical to, to really understanding the bottom line and our real cost savings or our real expenditure. Um, it, it looks, it looks like a great program. That video that you just showed us is dramatically better than what we saw a couple of years ago. So, um, I mean, it really looks impressive, but I, I'd like to see, um, a program presented that really outlines what is our real cost and you know how much are we really going to save by doing this. The other concern too is that we're replacing a lot of lines and so is the need to, to video going to decrease as we have newer more and more newer lines and so I, mean, I don't know if this is a five-year lifetime 10-year 20-year I don't know but I imagine that over you know as we as we get better and better the need to video inspect may actually decrease, and so maybe we need to factor that in and look at, you know, five years out, um, you know, what, what, do, what do we intend to do? Any other questions or action by the council? Well, I, I just have a, uh, oops, sorry, I have a clarification. Did the Baykeeper's decree say we have to, um, expect the lines every five years? from now into eternity, or is it just that's something we are doing? The beekeeper required us to do an initial um, inspection and assessment, which we did and was completed in 2012. The consent okay. decree also requires us to video inspect after an ESSO, but it also requires us to monitor all of our grade fives. And so we have, currently we have 100 and I forget the number, 140 or 150 different locations, like the one, you, the one on it, the last one you saw has been repaired. But there are things like that, holes in pipes and stuff like that. We're required to monitor those annually. And as I mentioned in 2013, the contract with Proven for $70,000 wasn't meant to cover that. So we're, we've actually asked for, and in this year's budget, we've asked for more money. And that $70,000 has now grown to $180,000 in requests to cover CCTV uh, services. So whether we do in-house or whether we um, work with Proven or someone else, we have an increased need to provide better service in terms of CCTV. Um, the question about are we going to run ourselves out of business at some point, um, I, it's going to be a long time. <laughs> well, well, the other thing is, e even if we do repairs, the, the 
parts that didn't need repair 10 years ago or five years ago will need repairs in five years. I mean, it's a ev never-ending cycle. And if, it, if your report says the total cost is about $250,000 and the cost to have a one-year to do one-fifth of the city is between two hundred and seventy and four hundred and fifty thousand dollars and that's as you say not including staff time to do the traffic control and all those other things so uh, granted uh, the vice mayor's points um, it still looks like a bargain to me so I will um, introduce the resolution councilmember O'Connell aye councilmember Medina no councilmember Ibera aye Council Vice Mayor Salazar? No. Mayor Ruane? Aye. 